So I think Signal Hill is just a very unique city. When we were looking for a space, because my um, background was in you know, both art therapy as well as really loving to curate shows and put together shows, I wanted to have a space that could be dual purpose. And so um, when I was looking around in Signal Hill, we found that there were actually warehouse spaces that you could have kind of a gallery space as well as uh, like a more of a medical kind of um, part to it. So yeah, it just really, it really fit for us to have it in Signal Hill, partly because we live here. We really love the city and um, wanted to be able to have it be kind of about our own community. That was one of the kind of basic tenets that we felt like Greenlee was about, was about the community. And so to have it in our own community, we felt was really important. And um, we found a space that was perfect for us because we also, contemplation is also a part of Greenlee Art Space. So to have it in sort of a high traffic area, say, you know, downtown Long Beach or something, it just really wasn't what was going to work for us and for what we wanted. We, I wanted it to be more of a contemplative, quiet space. And I think um, it just gave us a lot more opportunity to be creative that way. So. Yeah. And part of its affordability too, I guess. Yes. It's, it's um, <laughs> Most an industrial space. We could get a larger space with more square footage to be able to display more art, and be able to to handle more people coming in for parking and kind of logistics that way. Uh, so it worked out fairly well, I think. Well, I know for myself, I first fell in love with art um, as a child. I always loved drawing and really expressing my feelings and my thoughts through art. Um, it was something that, it just was a big source of inspiration for me. So I you know, did poetry and made art, but it was always something that was very close, um, kind of close held in. I didn't share it with very many people. And I think when I went uh, back to school to get my master's in art therapy, um, I was pregnant with my daughter at the time. And so I really saw how that um, experience changed my art. And there were always these kind of round, um, enclosed, enclosed forms and very organic kind of shapes, things like that. And I think that that experience really caused me to fall in love with art even more and really begin to, um, I guess, explore what art was going to be for me and the way that I wanted to, um, yeah, be able to explore those kinds of things. So really looking into sculpture um, and working with uh, different types of media from around my home, nests and branches and um, seed pods, things like that, and to kind of express what was going on inside, but then also to be able to share that with others. So I know that's when I first um, fell in love with art, and I know you've loved art most of your life. As yeah, well. so I, I uh, started drawing and painting and uh, designing things when I was very young. Uh, and when I came to, to go to college, I started kind of on a track for engineering, for technical stuff. and. Uh, uh, somewhere in there took a design class in the art department at the college where I was going and really, really enjoyed it. And uh, uh, within a year or so, I'd switched over and did a major in fine arts, worked uh, ceramics and sculpture, and really, really enjoy kind of that aspect of being creative. I've since completed my master's in engineering as well, so I can kind of operate on both, both sides. Well, I think, you know, we have sort of... Um it, it, there's so many firsts for us, I think, together in this city. We, um, you know, we got married, it's been 25 years now. We got married 25 years ago, and, and we felt like uh, we ha found our first home, which is the home that we still live in, in the city of Signal Hill. We bought that, how many years ago was no, that's, that? That's 27, I think, no, or 23? 23, 23 yeah. years ago, yeah, yeah, so like 23 years ago. And so, yeah, I think, um, you know, we had, we had our first child in Signal Hill, we, our second child in Signal Hill, we opened our first art space here, and I think that, um, yeah, I think as a city, I grew up Northern California, small town, um, and Dave grew up in... In Lima, Peru, which is a very big city, similar to L.A., I guess. Yeah, so in a way, Signal Hill is kind of this compromise. It's like this small town sort of a feel in the midst of a big city. And I think that that 
um, has worked well for both of us because I feel like I've gotten to know a lot of the people I have connections with Signal Hill. Um, my children, they started their schooling started in Signal Hill. We used to go to the little library every day um, on the way walking my kids to school and back. And so even the connections with people in the library, a lot of those you know, led, led to and encouraged me along the path to kind of open up a business here in Signal Hill. So, so the concept behind Greenlee Art Space, I think it, it originated for, um, for us in, you know, a number of different ways. I've always enjoyed the idea of sort of art as a way to be able to build community. And um, one of the first art shows that Dave and I uh, put together was um, kind of this photography show that was titled Broken Beautiful. I have a friend who lives and works in Sierra Leone, West Africa with kids. And so we did a photography project with kids from her group and then um, kids from a youth group at our church. And we had a really great response to that um, project and lots of people really loved it. And I found we, we were able to kind of transform a room. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, we'd taken kind of an upper room in the in the church and uh, really worked on remodeling it, transforming it into a gallery, adding lights, kind of turning it into a space that made sense for uh, for exhibiting artwork and photography. And that was really uh, fun, I guess, interesting, exciting. It worked well. So that was kind of a, I guess, a driver to start off uh, mm -hmm. looking for a space that we could do something similar to that where we could kind of work on, on, on art and curating shows and, and giving a voice to the community for, for presenting their artwork. Right. So I think, you know, I, Dave talked a little bit about how he's from Peru and his um, grandparents actually lived in the jungle and his father was born in the jungle. And so um, before we kind of started Greenlee, we had gone out to the jungle together and, and I noticed just how being in that lush, green, rich environment was so inspiring to me artistically. And I noticed how my children, they were creating different things and Dave was drawing and I was drawing and writing. And so I was thinking about, you know, my background with growing up in Northern California, always being surrounded by sort of natural beauty. Um, I wanted sort of to bring a sense of that um, to a space in a city, so that idea of Greenlee, it's about things that are growing, how we can help uh, individual artists um, to grow and to nurture, and how we can also build like community together. We find that at our big shows, things like that, over the years, it's, it's like family. It's like, it's about sort of bringing one another together and encouraging each other, because I think, you know, artists, we can tend to be more singular individuals and it can be harder to find people that you connect with. And I think that's one of the things that Dave and I really, you know, find that we're passionate about is connecting with our community and connecting other artists with one another. Um, and just the creative in each one of us, I think, you know, I mean, you can maybe speak a little bit to that. We didn't really want to have it be this, we want there to be good quality work, but we didn't want it to be sort of a, uh, I don't know how to put it, I guess. Yeah, maybe. and uh, it's, it's not an elitist gallery. There it's not go. something Thank that's you. in a, you know, in a gallery district uh, looking at high art and looking at, at high-end things. I mean, we're, we're very conscious of, of the quality of the art and making sure that we have very good quality uh, work and, and strong artists, but uh, it's not about, I guess, the hype and the, and the, the the sometimes the subculture that goes around the the high end galleries. Yeah, and we want to be not driven just by like commercial concerns. It's really about sort of um, encouraging the creative in everyone. So we'll have you know in our our last show that one of the last shows that we did, we had you know a high school student that who had never shown before. She was super excited. In, in our opening, she was talking with um, an older artist that we'd worked with over the years, and they were encouraging one another. And so that is really that sense of community and of, you know, the, the, the quality is very good, but it's not about sort of that you have to be known and you have to be this professional artist to show with us. We want to give opportunities to everybody. So. Mm -hmm. So uh, services the art space provides. Um, we have... Um, 
a couple art therapists that rent out uh, one of the rooms to do therapy with individual clients or sometimes group clients um, on a regular basis. And then we do uh, shows, uh, we curate shows, we, we work with members of the community to develop those shows, we work with um, uh, sometimes groups of artists to develop shows, and there's also uh, sometimes classes and sometimes uh, group or community events that we, that we facilitate. Yeah, we've done a number of things over the years, and I think like with anything, there's th things wax and wane over the years. So we've had, you know, like an artist lunch where I had a number of artists who had come, and they, we'd bring in different things and sit and talk together. We've had, um, we did something for a number of years called the Hope Project, where I got together with a group of artists, and we created artwork around this idea of hope once a week together at the space. Um, we've had an open studio group, which has turned out to be mainly um, kind of with um, art therapists and that's kind of an opportunity to share their you know to share our work together to come up with an intention and to create something um, one of the things that we're looking to do that I'm really looking to open up and do this next year there's a few things that I really want to sort of add into what we're doing um, I want to add in some art meditation times um, during the day as well as maybe over the weekend because I really feel like art is an amazing um, tool to be able to sort of explore what's going on inside of yourself and kind of that journey aspect. Um, and I really would like to start making the space more available for individuals to do that. Potentially, we have done art mentoring in kind of a more informal fashion with artists who are interested in showing at the space. And now that we're getting a little bit more people, know, you know, more people knowing about us, I have more artists who are interested in that. So I'm thinking about offering art mentoring in a more sort of um, maybe formal kind of a kind of a way. Um, and then I really want to start again, one of the things I, I went uh, Last November, I was fortunate enough to travel to Delhi, India with a group called Art for Change, and I got to work with a group of, it was about 12 um, you know, national Indian artists, and it was really exciting kind of work that we did there. And one of the things we had to do was present on sort of our trajectory or how we went, how we became an artist and where we saw our artwork going. And that's something that I would, um, that I really want to start at Greenlee with the artists in the community, you know, a time for other artists to come in and to hear about some of the artists and their trajectory and see some of their work. So I'm thinking about, those are some of the things I'm thinking of starting up in this next year. The local Signal Hill Long Beach art community, uh, I love it for so many different reasons. I mean, I think um, one of my first introductions or connections to it was actually at a uh, event that I went to at the Long Beach, the Latin American Museum of Art. They were having this kind of day where they were talking about the business side of art, and I got to go and hear different speakers. And at that event, I actually um, met a, a woman named Slater Barron, who's a very well-known artist in the community. Uh, she has connections to lots and lots of different artists. And she and I, um, she, she wanted to come and see Greenlee, and she's probably one of the first sort of professional artists that uh, came and saw what, what we were doing there. And she has become one of the dearest people to me in my life. She's been so encouraging and so, um, yeah, just she's done, for numbers of years, she's done um, these uh, picnics, you know, over the summer with many different artists and artists from different walks of life, from Long Beach and Signal Hill and all of that. And that was one of the ways that I first really got connected with that community. There's a tour called the Mid-City Studio Tour, which has many Long Beach artists. Um, and I know, I'm not sure, we might have been the only Signal Hill ones on there. But that, we were a part of that tour. Um, because of Slater Baron, and I got to know many different artists um, through that. And so I think just, you know, over the years with, especially with our larger group shows, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah so over the years we've uh, met a, a lot of artists with some of our larger group shows. We do kind of once a year a very large show. Uh, I think the last show involved 60 some artists, local artists. Uh, we've done shows with up to 70 artists from the area. Um, 
And we find that there's a, a, a very high quality, high caliber of work that is present within uh, Long Beach artists. Uh, one of the things that we also find is that they all are looking for a very good professional place to show their work. And uh, some of them are showing out in uh, Santa Monica or Laguna Beach or other areas, but there's not a lot of... Uh, places within the Long Beach Signal Hill community to show art professionally. So we've tried to jump in and, and provide a place to do that as well. Yeah, and I think both of us, we kind of, you know, I, I think that our strengths, we really work together to, you know, sort of bring that, that um, sense of professionalism to what we do. We, because we're both artists, we know that it's important how the artwork is hung, what you put next to what. I think it's how you hang a show is similar to a community, right? And similar to like friends in the community. You have, if you're with people who bring out the best in you, then you go from strength to strength. And I think it's similar with art. Some art, you put it next to another piece and it can look awful. You could have the same art hung in a different way and, and the show wouldn't come together. But if you can figure out where different things go, um, yeah, I think that goes really well. And one of the things we've been able to do, which I didn't mention before, but I want to mention right now since I'm thinking of it, is that over the years I've had um, quite a number of interns from local, um, from universities who are interested in art or in psychology. And so we've really been able to train quite a few young artists who are interested either in art therapy or in curating um, shows, things like that. I've been able to really train them about running a nonprofit gallery, how to go about curating shows, um, really push them as well as artists and um, you know, over the years, the other thing that we've done, we, the last couple of years, we haven't, we haven't had a, um, a space to do it because the teacher moved on, but we've gone into um, David Burcham Elementary School, and there's a teacher there that had a special day class. So we probably worked with her for about over a six-year period, and we had interns who would go in, and they would teach to the kids, and then we'd work with the kids with the art, and oftentimes we would use that art to create shows or allow them to be part of bigger shows. So that's um, been a pretty significant part, I think, of the work that we've done is really inspiring and encouraging sort of those artists or curators of, you know, the next generation. We really feel strongly that um, that's a big part of what we want to do. We want to inspire and encourage people that you know, it's it's not easy to follow your dream and to do what you feel like is really important, but it is possible if you are willing to make those sacrifices. So um, we're excited about the work that we're doing with college um, in, uh, individuals. And we just recently had um, our intern over the summer. She has come on our board. So we like having that young sort of um, perspective that can help keep us in touch with what's happening in the kind of in the current art scene. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had so many different shows over the years, and it's really been a joy, I think, to be able to work on those shows. And so um, maybe I'll pick out a few of my, of my favorite over the years, and okay. you can maybe pick out a few of yours. Um, let's see, where to start? Hmm. Uh, let's see. We had a, our, one of our first kind of larger group shows that we did, um, that it was called On Silvered Wings. And the idea behind it was like, uh, it was about birds. And so we partnered up with a place called South Bay Wildlife Rehab. And they actually were able to bring birds to the event. So they had hawks and owls. And so I still have individuals who come to our shows who talk about that opening. And we had, I think that was probably about 40 artists that we had in that show. Um, and it was all different types of birds. And it was just such a beautiful event uh, where we had, you know, yeah, good food and good conversation. And the artwork was really beautiful. Um, one of the shows that I worked on this last year uh, was a show called Darkness and Light. And so there's a group called Council to Secure Justice, and they work with uh, young 
um, women and some young boys that have been uh, sexually abused in India. And so they help get them legal counsel and get them into group homes and really support them through the process of um, getting justice. So it's this idea about justice. And so I was approached by the director, John Derby, and he wanted to do a show with Greenlee. And so we did a photography project where we asked them to kind of uh, think about this concept of darkness and light and what did that mean to them. And uh, I was able to extend that project to my friend who lives in Sierra Leone, who works with many individuals who live on the streets and things like that. So um, the, the holiday of Diwali is a really important holiday in India. And so we kind of wanted this show to correspond with that celebration of um, light conquering over darkness. And so it was just a really amazing to, to get there. We curated out the photos and then we got um, a chance to have John come and speak at our opening. We had two um, dancers from a group called the Dancing Storytellers and they created a piece for us that they performed um, at the opening. And it was just, it was a very inspiring show. Um, I'll let you talk a little bit about a few, and then I'll think of, <laughs> if I can think of any others. So go okay. ahead. So um, we've also done some shows where we focus and highlight work of uh, specific uh, artists. So uh, one of the ones that I thought was pretty fun, uh, we did a show uh, with three sculptors, two of them kind of further on in their career, and one of them that was very early career. Uh, Andres Alarcón is a, a fairly new sculptor. I think he's 18 or 19 years old, uh, learning to weld and was building kind of these uh, little intricate um, designs, and we, were, we really wanted to challenge him to build larger pieces. So we paired him with uh, Nate Jones, who's a local um, Long Beach artist who does work with uh, tire shavings, of all things, um, and with uh, Karina uh, Massengill, who mm -hmm. uh, lives in Palos Verdes and does... San Pedro. San Pedro. She's been a sculptor for a long time, uh, does cast aluminum and uh, photography as well. And so it was really exciting to bring three sculptors together and also a challenge to kind of hang and develop the work. We actually had one of Nate's pieces that didn't fit in the gallery because it was so <laughs> tall. So we had to figure out ways to uh, to work around the, the structure, the lighting to kind of get things into place. And it was, it was a really fun, exciting show to kind of get get up and, and going. Um, I think that was one of my uh, recent favorites. <laughs> Any other ones you want to bring up now? Well, I think Slater, the show that we did with Slater Baron. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, Slater is known as the Lint Lady, and she's done lots of work with Dryer Lint. So one of the um, important pieces that she did, she's done a lot of important work, but one of the important pieces she did was about her parents and sort of their, um, they, got, they got ill with Alzheimer's. And so she did a uh, Lint piece that had to do with this. It was called My Mother's Garden, I believe, part one. And as I was talking with Slater, uh, I found out that she actually had an installation that was about 100 feet of canvas that had been rolled up in her garage and had never, ever been installed before. Um, no one had seen it. It had been in her garage, I think, for over 30 years. And I said, we have to show that work to the community. And so it was really special because it was the first time she actually got to see it. She had created it while her parents were sick. She basically painted... Um, kind of like, like eight foot tall canvas yeah. and, and uh, yeah, almost a hundred feet of, of canvas. Feet. So we put it all around the outside of the gallery. Then we had AstroTurf on the bottom. And then she had these figures that were amazing um, that were outlines kind of of her mom. And the, she had these different colored track suits on. Um, and then her hands and her face were in pencil. So there was this idea of how who the person become, is gets more... Um, it's not as distinct and as clear as it used to be. And then on the back, it was painted black. And then these figures stood up. So Slater and I you know, placed them around inside of the gallery. So when people came into this exhibit, I would say it was probably one of the most emotionally impactful exhibits that we've had. People would be in tears. It was really um, powerful for individuals with their own experiences with individuals with Alzheimer's. And uh, yeah, Slater talks about that as being a very special and unique thing. And I think 
that's part of my passion for having an actual gallery space. It's very different. You can see a picture of something online, but to be in the presence of the work, to have the work surrounding you like in an installation, that is not something that's going to happen if you don't have a space to do it in. And I think that's one of the reasons why we love mm. having our actual space. And it's also something that's fairly difficult to do in a commercial space because it's Correct. not like you're going to sell this installation and gain money off of a, of a commission or something. So it's uh, being able to have the space and really focus on the community and being able to do these kind of concept shows and, and uh, things that really highlight uh, the wide variety of art I think is important for us. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely so. Well, we have a lot of plans for 2019. We're very excited for this year to come. Um, one of the things that's exciting about a small gallery like ours is that, you know, we really can be um, so creative in what we're able to do. And I think that's one of the things that we love. And so, you know, sometimes there's things that are definitely set in stone and mm -hmm. sometimes there's things that are still in flux. So one of the things I'm very excited about is we have a young um, Hispanic artist named Juan Gomez, and he's shown with us in our group shows over the last five years, and we've really seen a development in his work. His work has grown and developed over that time, and he felt comfortable enough with us to approach me and say, I really want to have a show. I want to have a solo show. And so we looked over, I looked over his work, and um, so that's going to be next uh October, so really kind of working through with him going about going about the show and kind of guiding him some on that. And we're really excited that we're going to present this young emerging artist um, to the community, and uh, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a group, it's a Signal Hill group, actually, which is also really great, that's called Quilts on the Wall. And so they do art quilts, and so we're still kind of playing around with when that's going to be. We're not exactly sure, and it, it'll either be a retrospective show or we, can, we might come up with some type of a theme for them. We're not sure. We'll definitely have our group show. You wanna? Yeah, so every year we do a fairly large kind of invitation to the community group show. Um, so we'll have one this year. It'll be probably be April, April time frame. Yeah. Uh, and usually we do a, a, a call to artists with a specific theme that's going to come out probably January time frame. Yeah, usually January. And um, those are always fun, exciting. We usually have live music. We usually have a, kind of a big event, big celebration around art on that. So that's that's definite for, for April. Um, yeah, and we have a few, you know, we kind of play around with different ideas for themes. So I think one of the ideas we were thinking of was dreams and maybe like another idea I had was artifact, this idea of what are the artifacts in our life and what does artifact mean for um, those of us in this current age. I feel like it, we'd like to have themes that are very broad and open so that they can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. And then we try to pair it with a uh, nonprofit in the community who's doing something good in that area. So like the home show that we did this last year, we partnered with Rebuilding Together Long Beach that helps low-income people um, with home free home repairs to stay in their home. So um, yeah, I'm trying to we'll think. See. Yeah, we'll see. A we holiday might, Bazaar? Yes, Holiday Bazaar. So Holiday Bazaar is something we're going to do this year for the first time. So we'll see how it goes. And we're thinking of doing it next year. And just another opportunity for artists from the community to share their artwork with, with a group of people. And yeah, I think it's kind of a community sort of a feeling when you do things around the holidays. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see about that. So yeah. Um, yeah, and then I think just the other the other ways that with my I guess background and sort of my journey as an artist, um, I am really wanting to incorporate more sort of art meditation, um, poten potentially some individual art spiritual direction if people are interested in sort of um, deepening their understanding of who they want to be and the direction that they're going. And so we're kind of looking at some of those things. And then also, like we talked about, I really would like to have some groups where, you know, artists can come and talk about their work. Other artists can come and hear about it. And really that sort of networking kind of a thing. We'd had something similar to that maybe three years ago. It was called Gathering at Greenlee. And we did it for a while and it was, it was really great. Um, but I think that having it be more centered around a specific artist will be a great way to take that forward. Yeah. So, but we're, we're really open. I mean, I think that that's kind of the neat thing. There's different 
different groups or opportunities kind of come our way. And so the nice thing with being a, a small, you know, volunteer run organization is that we can be extremely creative in the things that we do and we can be um, somewhat flexible. Mm -hmm. so. When we partner with nonprofits, uh, a lot of times it's thematically based around a, a concept or an idea. So it's just a very specific nonprofit that's selected to, for for their work with the community and and how it relates to kind of the show. Uh, when we have these shows, we'll we'll raise some money through entry fees. We'll raise some money through uh, sale of artwork. We'll then typically give a portion of those funds that are raised directly to the nonprofit. And the second piece that we also do is we invite them to present their, um, kind of to set up a booth during the opening so that the community gets a real sense for what they do and they can engage directly and it kind of adds an audience to, uh, for that nonprofit to kind of share what they do with a wider group of the community that they may not necessarily have been in contact with in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, that that is a really important aspect I believe of community is that um, you know we're not there it, it's different than the commercial sector we're not there to compete with one another we're we're this is about sort of um, encouraging you know the the other people in our community mm -hmm. that are doing good for the world and I think that you know it's exciting for me because I am passionate about a lot of different things I think it's really exciting because then artists get to have and feel that sense of like a social um, action piece that they're that the work that they're producing yes they can have something so we did a show called blue that was all about the ocean and so you know we had a number of different artwork that commented on sort of the pollution in the ocean and we had artwork that looked at the beauty of the ocean and it was sort of this full range of things and we partnered with a group called Algalita that does research a nonprofit group that does research on the impact of you know, trash and things like that on the ocean. And so I think it's really exciting to be able to give artists, you know, they're inspiring people through their work, they're making commentary on sort of this subject, but then they also, part of the funds that are raised through this show, they also get to feel like that is also having a very practical impact in that area, a very practical social action piece. So I think that that's exciting and inspiring for artists um, as, as well as for us. Like we really want to be able to sort of uh, bring notice to these different groups. There's lots of different nonprofits that are doing really good things. And so we love as, oh, we think that it just helps to strengthen everyone if we can um, bring or highlight what other groups are doing. Yeah. <laughs> what is my ultimate goal for Greenlee? I have dreams. I have plans. So we'll see. We'll see exactly what happens. I mean, I think that, you know, Dave and I have for a while been looking for a space that we could purchase because we really would love to have, you know, currently we lease the space and we've been able to, we have a one gallery where we can basically have one show at a time. So a show has to come up and then it has to come down. And so there's that kind of rhythm to it. And I think that I would love to have a space where we could have some permanent installations, some rotating exhibits, a space that could be, um, yeah, kind of multi-use, multi multi-use, multifunctional. Um. Somewhere where we could maybe also have uh, maybe artists in residence, where mm -hmm. we can kind of highlight uh, community, uh, bring artists in and be able yes. to develop work there. So I guess... Uh, uh, Greenlee Art Space turning into a Greenlee Museum or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, again, not, um, I guess, traditional uh, high-end uh, kind of exclusive art, but really community-based. So maybe it's more a museum of contemplation or a museum mm -hmm. of, of kind of taking it a little more a spiritual direction or, or a thought direction. Uh, and really with a, with a sense for kind of community and partnering with the community and, and working that way. Yeah, and I love, you know, we've been able to do so many things with people from across the ocean, and I think it was really impactful and, and amazing for me to be able to travel to India and work with a group that I did where we lived and worked together and we created work out of that. So I would love if we were able to have a space where we could bring people, say, from India or from Africa, 
you know, to really get that sense of other voices and the way, you know, and how that can interact and impact our community. So yeah, we would love to have, we're, we're looking for a space that uh, somebody wants to give us and then we can just, <laughs> you know, like remodel it and make it, make it beautiful or whatever. But we'll see. We're not sure exactly where that's going to lead us, but we definitely feel like, um, you know, Greenlee has continued to grow over the years. We've continued to have a pretty big impact on the community around us, which we're, we feel really fortunate and grateful for. And so we would love to be able to have a space that we could just, yeah, I guess. Continue to do that. Continue to do that. Yeah. yeah, continue to do that. So I'm excited about being able to kind of present our vision for the for Greenlee Art Space and what we believe it can be. Um, I think art is important for everyone, even uh, even just in terms of self-expression or or learning how to kind of be in touch with your your creative side. And I think that's kind of part of what we bring uh, into the community with Greenlee Art Space. So it's exciting to be able to present that to the community. Yeah, I think I've been very um, just encouraged uh, over the last number of years because when we first started out, I think a lot of people would say, you know nonprofit art gallery like I don't get that what does that mean and, and what is that about and I think it's been wonderful over the years to have so many artists and individuals from the community give us feedback that we really are filling this major need that there is for a space that you know artists from the community can show their work and we get a lot of feedback from those artists who you know they're professionals and if their artwork wasn't hung well they would tell us so yes. it's very nice that they really seem to appreciate the um the care and the professionalism that we put into it and i think you know i, I think that art has been a, a way for individuals to express you know sort of their deepest hopes and desires and and dreams and all of those things over the years and i think um for a community to be a full um and wonderful place to be. I think you need to have spaces that are dedicated to the art, and it takes it takes sacrifice, it takes um, hard work to be able to to bring this to the community. But we're we feel very fortunate that we are able to do that, and I'm excited for the ways that um, we can maybe continue to bring a space of quiet and of beauty and a place where people can stop and, and think and maybe get in touch with their own creativity. Um, really, I, I think it's important work that we do. It's not always something that, um, it, yeah, it's, it's important work. So I'm really grateful. I'm especially grateful to this guy because I'm kind of the one who dreams up these different ideas. And I say, I want to do this, or I have this idea. And he's, he's, wonderful to be able to figure out how to make it happen so very grateful grateful to you too <laughs> as a couple creating art together um we each have i guess strengths that kind of reinforce each other um mm -hmm. i have uh, a little more of a I guess logical technical uh, background, so I tend to try to figure out the logistics behind how to do things, uh, how to hang it, do the math behind it, kind of figure out how to manage uh, squeezing in, you know, a hundred pieces of art in a gallery. This, <laughs> <laughs> or or how to how to manage uh, fitting pieces that are too tall for our lighting system, and what do, what do we do to to work that? Um, and Kimberly provides me with uh, the vision and and uh, sometimes the challenges that need to be overcome. Um, if it was up to me, I'd probably be fairly comfortable with kind of keeping everything very, <laughs> very standardized and the same. And 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 mm. the, the the creative vision of create of putting something new up and and kind of stretching, uh, pushing boundaries, pushing uh, what can be done is is something that that Kimberly kind of really pushes and drives me on, which is which is great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's really wonderful. You know, it's wonderful to be able to work together. And I think, you know, like you said, I think that, you know, he has strengths that I don't. And sometimes my ideas can get too grand and too big. And it's good that he can help me to um, look at ways to make it possible. And I think, you know, one of the most exciting things that I feel like we've done together as artists um, was at the beginning of this last year, I, I 
was working with another local artist, Connie D.K. Lang. She had seen some of my installation work in the past and said, I really want to do an installation with you. And so we started getting together last year and talking about what is this installation that we would want to work on together. And so the idea of sort of the journey of life and and sort of the markers along that journey. And, and mm -hmm. you know, it's really interesting kind of from her point of view. And so we invited, we, we wanted Dave to be part of that and um, another artist, Cheyenne, who's also on my board, uh, to be part of that. And so together as four artists, we worked on this vision and Dave um, created, in school I've seen, he created these beautiful wooden arches and I've always wanted him to make more of those. That's always been in my, like, in the back of my mind. I, I want him to make more of those. And so it was a perfect opportunity. So he created these large, beautiful um, wood pieces. You want to say? Yeah, basically looked at converting the gallery, you know, very square, kind of rectangular, confined space and trying to really uh, put it on edge a little bit and give it a feel of a, a cathedral with, uh, so I actually raised the lights by about 12 feet, almost up to the fixed ceiling in the gallery. Mm -hmm. um, built a bunch of columns with archways uh, where the archways really supported the columns and the columns uh, ended in an almost uh, almost a pinpoint connection with the floor so really gave this gallery a very different feel a kind of a lofty uh, high ceilinged uh, arched uh, com almost uh, reminiscent of a, of a a gothic cathedral space or something like that. And so it was pretty exciting to be able to kind of have the 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 ability to kind of transform the space into something very different from what it normally is. Yeah, and I think, you know, it I mean I kind of think it kind of parallels our mirrors the way that we work together because like you provided this structure mm -hmm. and then I sort of filled it in with sort of all these different kind of spiritual parts and pieces. So I had, you know, trees that were made out of, um, that were lit from below from um, lights and then they were, you know, sewn out of uh, fabric, white fabric, so they're like these aspens. And I created this deer woman with branch antlers and, you know, kind of this beautiful red cape and she was standing sort of as this guide along the, along the journey. And, you know, it was really, yeah, it was just really exciting to be able to work together on a creation like that. And I think, you know, because it's not, it, once again, it's something where it's not a competition between us. It's not, you know, oh, I'm going to show my work. You can't show yours kind <laughs> of a thing. It's really, we really enjoy sort of bringing out the best in one another. And I think, you know, I can kind of come up with the visions or the sort of the grander ideas. And then Dave really can come up with more of the ways to see those see those things work. So he has helped me also because sometimes when you're the one who has these bigger ideas, you can also get really discouraged because not everybody understands your, your big grand ideas. But he's always really believed, you know, I, I think that he's believed in me enough to be willing to, um, you know, support Greenlee in so many different ways. Um, that's been a true just, yeah, just kind of testament to, you know, the way that we, I think, love one another and, and work together. And even though we've been married for 25 years, we still enjoy working together. Mm -hmm. So that's good. 